Thanks for joining me today. Hey, my pleasure. Good to see you again. Nice to be here. Yeah, I'm rocking. I'm rocking the Australian tour shirt. There you go, buddy. Yeah. How, how did you uh, enjoy the tour here? Oh, well, it was great. It was a bucket list for me. Always wanted to be. I've never been there. Always had wanted to be there. And I grew up with my dad always wanting to go there. So it was a huge, huge thing for me for us to go there. So and especially to have the turnout that we did, you know, and have so much fun. So it, it was it was a monumental moment that I will never forget. And we're coming back too. So ah yes, we'll, yeah. we'll get to that uh, in a little while. What, yeah. What did um? It was a pretty whirlwind tour, which most bands uh, tend to organize because we're a long way away and they try and book it in with something else you do you come in right. smash smash out the shows maybe get a day off and then clear out what did you do apart from play a few shows i think we came in smashed played left yeah, you know right. and it was like and both mike and i were like you know when we come back here we're going to have days off because i want to yes. hang out here. i want to go see stuff yeah. you know i want to go i want to go you know I want to go spend some time here. And that's the same way with Europe. I mean, we've been going over there forever since we were kids. I've never gone over there as, as a tourist, you know, so everything yeah. is like, oh, there's the Eiffel Tower, mm, yeah. you know, like, look at, you know, here, oh, here we're in Germany and we do get a day off. It's like, I'm not going anywhere, guys. I'm sleeping because we're still jet lagged, you know, so, so it, it's, it's cool that we get to go there. But when you're on tour, you're working and days off are expensive. So, you know. And when, you, when you're as rich as we are, the days off, you don't want to spend so much money, right? <laughs> 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 so, yeah, you got to watch that kind of stuff, you know, so, but it's, uh, but next time we come back, we're definitely going to, you know, make the most of it. I definitely want to. So there's a lot of stuff I want to see. If you don't have much time, maybe we can organize a petting zoo to come, <laughs> to come to Metal Church's hotel, whatever. <laughs> like a, here's a kangaroo, if I can, there you go. <laughs> yes. A petting zoo would have never occurred to me. <laughs> All I could think of now was Austin Powers. Will it be an evil petting zoo? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't know why uh, that probably only even come to me because I was at a kid's birthday party last week and they had a fucking mobile petting zoo with uh, various koalas little and all farmyard that. animals. Right, uh, right, right. Oh, boy. <clears throat> so... After you left Australia, what did you do then? Did you keep touring? Uh, we, we flew back home. That's the last time I've been on stage was Brisbane. Yeah, right. Yeah. So that was the last time we played, you know, and Steve wasn't even, Steve couldn't even be there you no. know, because of, you know, things like that. So we, Steve and I haven't been on stage together in about six years, five years wow. now. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Well, because I knew I was moving when I came back, when we came back from Australia. Yeah. When I so I we didn't have anything on the books, so I moved and I was relocating to Southern California from Washington State. So when I moved, we didn't have anything booked, and then about three months after I got down here, COVID hit and shut everything down. So we were fortunate; we didn't have to cancel a bunch of stuff. So you know, it was so that was the last time we played. So yeah. So what has the band done in the meantime? Was there a whole period where you were just like inactive or? Did you start yes. writing back then? or what Well, was I started writing about about a year and a half after I moved. I yeah. relocated down here. Then I bought this place and kind of settled in. Then it was like, okay, okay, kind of, all right, time to do this. You know, and then with all the COVID BS going on and everything. So it was, uh, everything was kind of shut down. So everybody <laughs> was kind of, you know, doing their thing in the studio. But I was moving and setting up new, setting up house and all that kind of stuff. So, um so then I picked up, started writing, and then, uh, you know, that's when I was in touch with Mike, and uh, I started putting together a new record, so I wrote a new album, got it to Mike, we had just started uh, started the process of working on a new album, and then uh, then he passed away, so that was like, you know, that was, that was a shocker, so, you know, mm. that was, but that was pretty much what I'd done, but in the meantime, I did, I did work, do Todd Michael Hall's album, he's a singer that was, mm -hmm. he was He's the singer for Riot Five mm -hmm. now. Yeah, and, yeah hell so of a good voice. man. Oh God, what a what a great singer and what a great guy. Yeah. So we did that, and I made that record, and then uh, then did the the live in Japan record, put that together, and that'll be coming out probably later this year. And um, and then I moved, 
because I was down here shopping. I'm just trying to, I'm going back in my head what I did. So there was a pretty much metal church was pretty inactive. And then, uh, then after Mike passed that shut everything down for a while. <clears throat> and then we started trying to toy with the idea whether we should continue. And I was kind of, I had real mixed emotions about it. And I'm like, yeah. should we go? I'm like, is this singer number four? You know, I mean, we got both our singers, the original singers are, are gone. Is that, a, is that a hint from the universe, so to speak? <laughs> You know, I'm like, okay, what are you telling me here? So I thought we would just take baby steps and see. Yeah. So we stalked and was like, we all thought, you know, well, I wrote a new record. So I had a whole pile of new songs. And mm. and it was like, well, if nothing else, let's put these songs out, you know, and on you know, and dedicate the album to Mike yeah. if we can find the right singer. And uh, we didn't want to, I did not want to go through a big, huge, you know, campaign of finding a singer and make a big production of it. I just wanted to kind of see if we could find somebody and do it under the radar. So it wasn't a big deal in case it didn't work out, you yeah. know, in case things or things started kind of not feeling right. And then it's like, now let's not do this. So we did, we wanted to do everything really kind of down low on the, you know, under the radar, it's like I said. So, and then uh, we had one other guy we were working with and, uh, and then uh, through Steve and Stett, Mark was already in our orbit. You yeah, know, he yeah. they knew him and he suggested him. And I heard uh, heard some of the stuff he did with Ron. I'm like, okay, well, he seems like a nice guy. You know, he's very into it. So, oh, let's send him a song and see what he does. And it was just kind of that step by step by step. And so, and the thing that I liked about it mostly is because what he brought was, and one of the things that made me feel a little bit more comfortable about moving forward was, the fact that it wasn't going to be just the same thing continuation it was going to be let's turn a page let's let's have a different sound let's let's reinvent ourselves to a point let's go back to the original the thrashy stuff that we were you know we were known for originally because the stuff we did with mike uh it was much more on the melodic very hard rock side of things which i love mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. mark brought in a much more aggressive sound and it was like you know i like this we're not finding a mike clone we're going to find it's going to be a new chapter. We're going to kind of start anew and we're going to get a little more aggressive, you know, and that. So his voice lent to that. So it just kind of seemed like a natural progression. So it was a progression that I was very comfortable with. So, you know, so we just kept moving step by step. We got some shows coming up and we'll see how those go. And then we'll see how those go after that and just kind of, you know. When that little teaser was put online and no name was mentioned, but people were guessing. By the time I came into that conversation, people were already saying it was Mark. Right. And, and I'm like, oh, of course. I am so yeah. annoyed. And I said to anyone that would listen that I was annoyed that I didn't think of it first. Really? Yeah. yeah. Not, not annoyed yeah. that he'd been chosen. Annoyed that I didn't think of it first so I could sit back and say, see, I told you so. I told you. Oh, right, so. right. Yeah. Because he, Ross the boss came here i've seen them here in adelaide twice oh wow cool two different tours with mark singing and as soon as i heard his name mentioned i'm like of course because he he brings he will bring an energy to the live performance because he is full of beans yeah oh boy and, yeah right yeah <laughs> and it will I'll, i'm so excited that he was chosen so well done and it, it, that's that's why we kept going you know yeah. that's great you know kudos to you for that but it was it was the fact that he was already kind of in our circle somewhat yeah. he was a friend of the guys and so it that's why it kept moving forward because yeah. it made sense it just kind of worked and we did it you know again under the radar and you know we didn't announce anything we're just kind of <laughs> testing the waters and see how it goes you know mm -hmm. so it just it just was like it just felt okay yeah you know yeah. Felt, it makes yeah. sense yeah exactly if we can and if you feel comfortable um mike i mean that was a that was a gut punch to me it must have been just brutal to you guys did you looking back can you see any signs oh well yeah it's an interesting thing because he was going through a rough time he had uh gone through a divorce and gone through some stuff which i know hit him really really hard so he was he was struggling with that the family breaking up and things like that was really hard on him but 
we left him kind of left him alone to deal with it. We didn't put any pressure on him to do band stuff because I was again, I was moving and we had that all set up. So we didn't we just left him, let him be, um, you know, just in contact with him. Just, you know, hey, how you doing every once in a while just to see, you know. And uh, when I started writing, when I spoke to him and it was time to start writing a new record, he was doing fine. He was coming out of it. He was feeling good, you know, and things he was kind of on the mend and was getting some help and things like that. And so he was uh, he was coming out of it. So that's what, hey, well, let's start working on a new record. He thought that was a great idea. You know, he just went through a real bad time like we all do. You know, I didn't you know, I knew he was struggling a little bit, but. You know, I, I don't want to get too personal about what was going on with him, but he was coming out of it. We spoke. We had a couple of great conversations. Mike was coming back. He was ready to make a new record. So I started writing. And then all of a sudden, then, you know, I got him the record. We had a conversation. Yeah, you know, a couple of times he listened to it, got me back. Oh, I like this. And I like this. Let's do something with this. Blah, blah, the usual process. And then about a week after that, I got the call. And it was like. If it would have happened about four or five months prior to that, I, I probably would have, I would have been surprised, but not as shocked. Yeah. But yeah. after that, it was, uh, it was like, yeah. Mm. To be perfectly honest, I still haven't processed it because yeah. I can't. Yeah. 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 And so yeah. I'm not going to try. I mean, I'm not. My best friend is gone, and you know, and I'm kind of one of the people that. And most artists probably are like this, that certain amount of, you know, there's a certain amount of depression and emotional things that go into creative types, you know, I mean, for mm, better yeah, or yeah, worse, yeah. you know, for better or worse. And then it's so some, I, but I don't understand. I can't relate to the feeling of being so depressed that something like that is the answer. Yeah, I, I can't, yeah. I can't get my head around that. I yeah. don't understand. So yeah. I think there was some, uh, I believe, fully believe that there was, uh, you know, some of the antidepressants and some of the chemicals and pills and things that are prescribed to a lot of people had a lot to do with it. Mm. And, yeah, yeah I, I that's just my personal opinion. I think that, you know, so um, so I haven't really processed it. I, can, yeah. I can't. I'm just like, I'm like, well, I, I don't know what to think. So I'm just yeah. going to keep moving forward and... Uh, yeah. You know, that's all, you know, and it's not that I'm insensitive. It's just, no, I, no. yeah, I just, I can't, <laughs> I can't, yeah. I just, yeah. And especially somebody like that, who is the most kind hearted, nicest, most loving, I know. Caring, caring guy I've ever met in my life, yeah. you know, and for him to be in that much pain, that just breaks my heart, you know? Yeah. You know? yeah. So, yeah. But, crazy. may he rest in peace. <clears throat> Absolutely. Yeah. Right. So you'd written all this new stuff and got Mark in to try things out. Did you write any stuff like specifically after Mark joined? Oh, well, yes. this would suit him better than it would have Mike. Yep. Half the album. Right. Yeah. Okay. Half of it. Half of the stuff is my, stuff I wrote for Mike in mind. The other half I wrote with Mark in mind. And so, yeah, and so there's a bunch of there's a bunch of leftover songs from that day. Someday I'll probably do something with. But yeah, it's just as it started taking a new direction, it just seemed like, yeah, okay, the the more aggressive, the more thrashy kind of thing is where we're going with this. And I like it. And I think that'll be a good direction, you mm -hmm. know, after, you know, for the fans, like and I think the fans will really dig it and appreciate it. A new chapter, need a new batch of songs. So so I started collab. I mean, started writing new material that was definitely much more in that vein. Yeah. So. Okay. So that's coming out May twenty fourth. Twenty third. Twenty third. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. I think it's the same down there too. So. Yeah, I've just probably got the dates wrong in my head. I'm old. Um, I hear that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what's the plan then? You mentioned before, right at the very beginning, that you're coming back down here. So tell us. I'm starting. About I'm hearing rumbles of offers to come back to Australia in uh, in November, December. Right. Yeah. So. Yep. Very exciting. Maybe we'll get that petting zoo organised. Yeah, we'll do that. An Efro petting zoo. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, you know, I'm definitely looking forward to that, and this time I definitely want to spend some time. So. Yeah, a lot of bands, 
overseas bands will come generally and do the East Coast, Brisbane, Sydney, Melbourne. Right. Sometimes we can get them to swing over to Adelaide. We're um, a bit the redheaded stepchild, <laughs> um, if you're familiar with that term. And then there's Perth Absolutely. way yeah. over there. Right. Perth way over, they get left out even more because they're so far away. Right, right. Um, so it's always good when bands come here, but there's plenty of places you could play. Okay, I will make sure of that when the discussions get a little more specific to get a gig in Adelaide. So mm. I want to see it too, but it'd be great to have a gig there, you know, for you to hang out and for the petting zoo. Yeah. <laughs> we'll have to get Australian Australian shirts with, with the, the Australian petting zoo tour. <laughs> <laughs> and have people go, what the hell is that? <laughs> I get people like yourself, they'll, they'll, they'll come over and if they get a day, they go to the zoo, you know, because they've got to see a fucking kangaroo or a koala or some shit like that. Right, right. And um, <clears throat> Rich Ward from Fozzie, okay, he's, right, he's, right. he's big on that, right? And yeah. they, they came to Adelaide in uh, November and he went to the Adelaide Zoo and he must have sweet talked someone and uh, they get him in there with the koalas and that. He had a great time. So. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> I would like to see that, but I would more, I just want to go see, I like driving around seeing the city and seeing neighborhoods and seeing stuff like that. I'm not much for actual tourist stuff. I'm more yeah. for like into the real thing and like, you know, like in Brisbane, it's like, okay, where did the saints play? You know, and stuff like that, you know, mm. like the history of it, kind of like when I was going to England the first time and, okay, this is where Queen met and this is where, you know, the, all the, the music history, you know, mm. some of my favorite bands from Australia, it's like, where are these guys from and where did these guys play and stuff like that, you know, yeah. Kudos for saying Brisbane and not Brisbane. Oh, right. Yeah. I, I learned that. I said, it looks like Brisbane. But it's like no, I, but I hear all you guys say Brisbane. I'm like, okay, well, I won't, I won't, I won't try to do the best way to say it. You know, I don't want to be cheeky or like try to be like something that I'm or be fake. But yeah, it's, it, I've always heard it Brisbane. Yeah, mm. so. yeah, good eye. So the new album, where's the best place to get that? Um, boy, you know, I mean, if there were record stores, that would be the best place. But I don't know. Yeah, I mean. I would suggest, I mean, obviously it's everywhere online. It'll be yeah. everywhere online, you know, the Amazons and that kind of stuff, or literally from Rat Pack Records. Mm. Yeah, That's that where I ordered mine from. Them. Mine is yeah. coming. Yeah. Mm. Cool. Yeah. Record stores are a bit light on these days. Um, you know, even though today's record store day. What's that? Today, today is record store day. All oh, right. Okay. Yeah. I wasn't aware so, of that. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if that, I, mean, I don't know if they do that there, but yeah, it's record store day here in America. So there's all these special releases on vinyl and all these kind of great stuff. Yeah. It, it's, it's really awesome. You know, I've got in there. Right. I love um, the background. Um, That's awesome. <laughs> all my old vinyl, like, so much vinyl in there, but I've got nothing to play it on these days, so I don't buy vinyl anymore. I buy CDs. I still buy CDs, even if uh -huh. um, even if I listen to most music on my phone, I will buy the CD. And um, I love having the physical product. All I listen mm. to anymore is vinyl. I just rebuilt mm. my stereo and rebuilding my catalog. I mean, my vinyl collection, just because it's so much more fun. But yeah, I you know bought an old Pioneer turntable and an old Sensui receiver, and I got big, huge, inefficient speakers and it's just a whole lot more fun you know yeah exactly yeah but then if the, then i still buy cds too because i like having physical product i hate downloading you know just because it's like well where's the art where's the you know and i want to support it's, the whole thing you know exactly right i miss having that big hunk of cardboard in my hand yeah you can actually us old guys can read the text you know and everything you know and there's <laughs> artwork because yeah the record is important but there's another part to the whole thing, which is the album art that goes yeah. with the record. That's yeah. really important. And if it's this big or doesn't even exist, yeah. Yeah. you know, that's part of the experience is putting the record on, opening it up and reading every, you know, every note, you know, everything on the record, looking at the pictures and it's big enough to see the detail. And that's the other half of the whole experience for me. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And so reading the lyrics, 
reading the lyrics if they put the right lyric sheet in there <laughs> yeah oh i've heard a lot of times you know the lyric sheet the lyrics get screwed up by the time they get to the printing because you're in the studio you're recording them you have them written and then they're in the studio and things change and then you forget to change the lyrics and it goes <laughs> to press it's like oh shit you know that happened on blessing in disguise yeah yeah right okay yeah so yeah. What's your main, <clears throat> if we could just go back, like way back, mm -hmm. starting out, what's your most uh, indelible memory of those days? A uh, metal church starting out in the yeah. 80s? Yeah. Well, the one thing I remember, I think more than anything, it's not a specific day or anything, but it's a specific specific era a vibe that was going on at the time kind of right when we were working on our first album before we got signed or anything there was a real sense of being part of some a movement there mm. was a real sense of of a, of a camaraderie a galvanizing sound a purpose you know we were there to you know we were all there for music because it was not commercial no. and it was like it was all of us uh, this underground groundswell of a movement and it felt really cool to be part of something and we were very much a part of that at the beginning you know starting to you know formulate this american thrash thing but the whole heavy metal thing was happening you know and it was all independent labels it was all underground it was all but we but it was growing and we were part of that i'll never forget that 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 sense of you know take, taking on all the world type of yeah, thing you know? yeah yeah, and it was awesome. It was really cool. And I don't, and I look at, you know, music history since, and I'm like, I don't think it's ever been any, there, there's nothing's like that now. There is no scene. It's all segmented into little things. You know, like if you like this music, this is where you're, there's no galvanizing sound. You know, there is no, there is no era from like, I think the last time there was a thing was grunge, the early 90s, mm. you know then maybe the alternative thing kind of, but it was just kind of dwindling to where everything just splintered into mm -hmm. whatever kind of music, everything's still out there, but there's nothing that's big. There's not one kind of music that's huge. There's not, you know, you know what I mean? There's oh, nothing not that this, just, this generation doesn't really have a definitive sound where we do, you know, mm -hmm. we've got, you know, we've got metal and, you know, and we got hard rock from the seventies and eighties. Yeah, exactly. That's our generation. I mean, I look at a 16 year old kid and I go, what's his sound? You know, yeah. it's a little bit of rap, a little bit of alternative, maybe some Nirvana, maybe, you know, so just a, this whole thing where it's just like, and I'm like, man, Hey, if I sit around feeling old, I'm like, you know, I wouldn't want to be a kid now. I yeah. love the fact no. that I was you know, I was, yeah. you know, a teenager in the 70s and I the shows that I got to see as a yeah. kid yeah. Like back in high school. It's like I wouldn't trade that for anything. Yeah. You know? yeah. Uh, a friend of mine um, who uh, is a singer here, quite a well-known singer in Adelaide, I connected with him on Facebook a number of years ago and he said something which resonated with me and his words were, we had our youth in the best of times. Bingo. <clears throat> yep. And you know, you talk to some of the the young younger kids today, and yeah, everything you said is true. We had um, we had something that they don't. They've got. They've seen yeah more bands than me. More bands too are here nowadays, and yeah. great. But some of the shit that I saw, and uh, especially because I went over to to the US in 1986 by myself and saw some bands. Oh, cool. And um, I saw Metallica with Cliff. Yeah, yeah. Right? I saw Exodus with Bailoff. Yeah. You know, so things that you, know, you, tell, yeah. people, you tell people that here and they go, fuck off. Fuck yeah, off. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's like I saw The Who with Keith Moon. You yeah, know? right. It's, you know, I saw it's the same kind of thing, you know. Yeah, yeah I mean, and that's that's what's so cool because those memories and what you just said right there that means something mm -hmm. that means something and i see a lot of kids walking around now with led zeppelin shirts on you know <laughs> and, and and i'm like we would have been caught dead wearing a shirt of a band that was 30 or 40 years old 
We no, didn't need I know. To. We wouldn't need to. Because, no, whatever was happening now was what was happening. I wasn't going to walk around with a Bill Haley shirt, yeah, you know, yeah. or anything like that. No, it's like that. But the kids are still, they're going back to our stuff, you yeah, know, and yeah. more power to them, you know, yeah. good. Because they really don't have a lot of their own. There is some exceptions. <laughs> there are some good, good rock bands out there, you know, but not, not like, you know, I go back to the 70s and the late 60s and the 70s and go back to stuff that I didn't have time to pay attention to. Yeah, because yeah, so yeah. much going on, and I rediscover bands that I missed, you know. Yeah. So it's yeah. like, wow, you know, that's why I look back at that and I go, because the whole art form is so important to me, you know, whether yeah. it's rock or, or whatever. I mean, I like all kinds of stuff, but the art form is so important. And now it's just, it, it's really odd because it, sometimes it looks like music isn't all that popular anymore, but it's actually more popular than ever. But everybody's just personalizing it with their phone or their iPod or something like that and it's just consumed differently now you mm. know but it's like I, I i miss print magazines you know yeah i miss that you know i yeah. really I miss, I miss the whole thing and that's why <laughs> when i heard that you know vinyl sales have outsold cds for the first time since like 89 i'm like yes you know that's <laughs> like that's great you know that's that's awesome you know it's still no big it's a whole different music business now but because of the difference now it allows us old guys to do it legitimately i don't like to say old guys i always call us veterans so veterans you know, yeah yeah but we get to still do it legitimately yeah. you know where yeah. the whole thing with the major labels would have happened that filter is gone now where it's like oh no they're over 30 they're done you know we got this guess what the kids are doing so mm. that is all gone which is great you know downside is the sales of records and all that kind of stuff but mm. then again now it's direct artists to fans you know you know the fact yeah. like i can do this interview with you you just wrote me directly and said hey do you want to do it sure there's no filter there's no big you know yeah. it's direct to yeah. you know, artists artists to fans which you can't beat that and it's not about money for me yeah i want to make a living doing it because it takes a lot of time but it's not about that you yeah. know, it's about doing what you love and the people now if they show up it's because they love the music that's the number one thing yeah yeah, yeah. okay i'll get off my soapbox now <laughs> no no it's yeah. i agree with everything you said absolutely cool. it was a different time and we were lucky to have been there absolutely but we, absolutely. we have adapted and we've moved on <laughs> yes we haven't moved on I'm still, I'm, my head is still firmly planted in 1974. It really is, you know, and I, and I, I'm, I'm fine. I own that. I'm, I'm good with that, you know, yeah, and then I will fine. gravitate to the eighties and yeah, I got to hear Saxon, you know, I was like, you know. yeah. <clears throat> Back in the early eighties when there wasn't as many overseas tours, if there was nothing on here in Adelaide, I'd go to Melbourne for the weekend and see some Melbourne bands. So I got to know a lot of the Melbourne guys and they had to have a nickname for everybody. Right. They used to call me Mal Saxon. Mal Saxon? Yeah, because really? I was wow. massive, massive Saxon. They were all Iron Maiden over there, right. but I was I was Saxon. Uh, that's right. Well, I got to tell you, I mean, as much as I love Iron Maiden and the whole thing, when I saw Sa it was Fastway, Saxon and Iron Maiden. It was a, it was a great tour. Right, it was a peace of mind tour for Maiden and Power and Glory tour for Saxon. Yeah. I will never forget this. Saxon just laid waste to Iron Maiden, yeah. just yeah. destroyed them. Yeah. Because that music, that time, that the way they played, what they played was yeah. more on the rock and roll, ACDC ish kind of thing. And yeah. that just translated so well in the arena. And Maiden yeah. came out and did their thing, and they were great. But it didn't have the impact yeah. that Saxon did. Yeah. I'll never forget that as long as I live. Just like, mm. just just like just being punched, and they were so good. It was mm. just awesome. You know? I saw Saxon in, I saw Saxon in 1986 in uh, Santa Monica in the Santa Monica Civic. Oh right! Oh nice! Yeah. Fun fun fact: Saxon, Armored Saint, Heretic, who oh, Mike right ended on. up singing for. He wasn't singing with them at the time. But, oh uh, okay cool yeah heretic with the opening band saxon were fucking incredible and they had a shoe fight with the crowd oh 
they stopped wow. all these shoes were lobbing on stage and they were throwing them back they actually stopped playing and had a shoe fight with the crowd and biff said yeah. hey what is it with southern california don't you like your fucking shoes or something right massive, right yeah massive shoe fight it was insane i've never heard of that before that's great yeah the shoe fighters yeah <laughs> 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 here comes my hero there. Right, um, here, here comes my size. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Where are you recording the new album? Because you've you've got your yeah, right in there. Right there. <laughs> right yeah. in there. Yeah. Yep. The whole band come in or do they phone uh, things in? Sort of. No, we we kind of did the whole remote thing yeah. for a while. Yeah. We did the remote thing. Yeah. Which is really weird, but it works. You can do it's it. another can thing do it. that's it's another thing that's quite different from the old days isn't it because yep. you would have had to all get in the one place all looking in, in each other's eyes visual cues all this sort of stuff but now yeah. you, you but you do can it. do it i mean some bands can do it and it doesn't work we've been playing together long enough to where it does you know and you know and again i just you know it's you know, for when we're doing drums and things like that you know we use the zoom and things like that so we can communicate and do what we need to do you know from from a distance because we're all spread out all over the country you know and uh so it allows us to function as a band and yet still you know not up completely uproot our lives to continue doesn't have to find somebody locally you know which is which is great you know you know mm -hmm. i live in southern california mark lives in boston you know so you know so it's so it's it's cool it's 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 strange and sometimes I wish it was different just because I would much rather go do it old school because I'm old school about it. I'm as old school about everything as I can be, mm. you know, but it allows the band to function, you know, mm. so take advantage of it. There's good things about there's good things about neck technology and there's a lot of bad things, mm. but you know, that happens to be one of the good things. So. Mm. And before you tour, you sort of meet somewhere to yep. rehearse. Is that how yeah, it normally done? Yeah, we're going to we're going to get together probably be in Florida before the show is coming up in June, you know, and, you know, and everybody's working on their stuff now. And we're going to be we're going to be doing a lot of uh, a lot of the older songs. We're changing up the set because obviously with Mike, we were doing a lot of we were doing a lot of the Mike Howe era stuff, mm. obviously. So now we're going to do more of the David Wayne era stuff that we weren't mm. doing. Mike. So we're going to pull out. Mm. Pardon? Yeah, go on. Go on. <laughs> Yeah, and then that's you're going to pull out some really obscure, you know, deep tracks. A few of those here and there too. So, yeah. you know, we're going to pull out some like, oh, I can't believe they're playing that one. You yeah. know, that kind of yeah. stuff. So, you know, so that yeah, that's one thing I was going to ask you, but this question had slipped my mind because I can tell you that if I was Mark and I had the opportunity to step into Metal Church, I would say yes, yes, I will do it. But you got to play this track, right? Or, yeah. You have to bring this track because you know as a fan coming in you know yeah. this track for example metal church that would be a if i was walking into metal church i'd say you have to play that track oh or yeah I'm not yeah there. right yeah we're we're doing we're doing some we're going to pull out a couple of hidden gems right good from the first couple of albums yeah so yeah, and we're going to do a few Mike Calera songs, obviously. Mm, and, yeah, obviously, yeah. Uh, yeah, and then, uh, but then we're going to do a lot of the older stuff and, you know, a couple of the new songs, you know, off the new album. I mean, mm -hmm. as much as the new album is getting a great response, we, I'm very, very well aware, and I totally appreciate the fact that when people come to see us, they want to hear the old stuff. They may love the new record, and one or two songs is fine, but I don't want to do a whole brand new set of all new stuff that people, they want to hear the old stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. And I'm totally cool with that. I get that, you know, because that's the way I am. If I go see, you know, if I go see Fog Hat or something, yeah, I want to hear, you know, the stuff off Energized and all that older stuff. They may have a new album up that's good, but I want to hear the old stuff, you know, and yeah. I, I get that. So that's where we're, we want to do that for the fans. You yeah. Because okay. Mark, Mark will be able to do a good job, and that's what he loves too. So, oh, fuck, he'll do a great job. Yeah. I'm very yeah. excited. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Look, I think we'll, um, wrap it up but i want you to do one thing for me sure give us a horns up in the camera if you don't mind there we go <laughs> excellent good on you there we because go because it's important to be heavy metal about it it's important <laughs> more metal than one hand can handle <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, thanks so much for uh, coming on and talking to me. Oh, my pleasure. Good to see you, man. Good to see you. Yeah. It's good to see you. Good to see you guys um, back in business. Uh, looking yep. forward to the uh, album arriving and being able to hear the rest of it. Good. And looking forward to welcoming you to our fine country later on in the year. I can't wait. I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that happens. Yeah, so, excellent. And I'll push for an Adelaide show. So Excellent. Good on you. Yeah, cool. Thanks for talking, man. Have a wonderful day. Good to see you. And we uh, let's chat again soon, man. Been good. Cheers, man. Take care.